This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. Now, when we get past these trees on the left, you need to use a little imagination. A bit like a lion's head. There's a, there's a vole down there, folks. Vole down there. Uh, just, uh, right, you see it down there? Oh, yeah. And the um, yeah. most endangered creatures in the country. So we, we need to get down there. Now, we're really fortunate to have them here. Isn't it amazing? They're supposed to stay miles away from people. And yet, you know, there they are with hundreds of people walking up and down. So why on earth, or especially in it, should endangered water voles set up business here? that you see even I'm getting quite excited about it and I work here every day. <laughs> That's really good news. Just past the tea rooms here on your left, we'll come to Lion Rock House. Welcome to the famous Cheddar Gorge, Somerset's Grand Canyon, where amongst crowds of people and surrounded by solid high stone walls, water voles are winning. And they're doing it with a little help from their friends. A road, and most importantly, a river runs through it, or rather the makings of a river. Rain on the Mendips ends up as the lifeblood for a water bowl. Across the road, under it for a water bowl, the bus passengers can see the next vole spot, and one of the best four spotting. This is the top mill pond, full of crowfoot, good news. But as everywhere, the bank is stone, borrowing potential minimal, surely bad news. They're not always easy to spot. Where are they? A vole or the current? A frog? A man trying to look like a bush? A real bush? A wren in the ivy? Yes, a vole too, but just a glimpse, but a clue too. The bush moves off. Meanwhile, back in the crowfoot, as soon as you leave, there's one right out in the open. Not one, but two drop in from the ivy. I look after the wildlife and the visitors, including dogs, and have spent many hours at all times of day, all through the year, trying to work out how the voles live here. That's a young one, actually. They get who would have thought, with miles of crowfoot stems available in the stream, a vole would tackle a huge leaf up above? Maybe it just makes a change. There's a lot of choice along these planted banks above the stone walls. Ah, so that's the answer. Burrow from above. Ivy's their best friend. We saw the voles on a programme on television. We were surprised that there were so many here, so close to... Uh, well, this is quite a busy road. Well, do you like them? Some people don't like them, they think they're rats. Oh no, I think they're wonderful because where we live, um, we've got a lake and uh, I actually asked some wildlife people to come and, and see whether we had any water voles there. Um, I just think they're wonderful things. But they were, they're much smaller than I thought they were going to be. I was surprised how small they were, actually. Quite surprised. Did you expect to get closer or is this pretty good? No, I think this is pretty good actually. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't think you'd get much closer than here to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I would love to see um, baby ones, um, to see how yeah. small they are. Um, and I'd actually like to know a lot more about water voles as well, um, because I don't know that much. Would you come back here again? Oh yes, <laughs> very much so. Yes, absolutely. So it's not a rat, despite being ratty from wind in the willows. It's interesting that people love water voles, but not rats at all. Rats can swim, but voles are better at it. A sort of doggy or ratty paddle through the crowfoot stems or along the tunnel bridge in the road. Very 
Cotoni Aster berries make a change, especially if someone gets them for you. Furry animals that sit up and use their hands like pandas are popular. <laughs> I've spotted another group of burrows, and guess who's moved in? Sitting on the steps with a home, albeit temporary, right next to you is an opportunity to be grasped in both hands. There are more steps behind the railings on the other side of the stream, where the Willows management keeps a close eye on the new arrivals. That includes Martin Ways, the man with a big lens. He hardly needs it. To have a water vole going about its business so close and so tame is well worth his visit from Norfolk. He is going to get some of the most exciting photos of water voles ever taken. The steps are a perfect base for a weed mat, piling up as he discards the feathery bits. Another camera, video, was set up behind the weed mat, and our vole was so accommodating it totally ignored it, not even bothering to look at itself in the camera screen. Such is the attraction of Apple. Then Martin spots something. Another vole comes swimming upstream along the wall. It seems to be urgent, pushing hard against the current. A few minutes later, she reappears, with a mouthful, which seems to need readjusting. Her baby stays still, apparently instinctively understanding what's going on. Then she comes back again to collect another. In the end, five altogether, some taken underwater, until she had moved them all. We don't know why. The young leave the burrow and explore. A mother can have three litters in a season, and the first litter can breed that first year. This is a large round pond with an island, a road along one side, and the car park where the Cheddar Caves bus starts its trips. So this unique population of Volesville has adapted to the special conditions in Cheddar Gorge. The noise, the people, the stone walls. But what about the mink? Swims, climbs, does like a ferret, down burrows, some CV. As the mink travel lethally upstream, the voles have nowhere to go. The last ones at the top, by the tourist information office, have nowhere to hide. And Volesville would be no more.